In this tutorial, we're going to look at box modeling. And the two tools we're going to look at first is the extrude tool and the insert edge loop tool. So I've created a cube in my scene. And if I want to see how many polygons there are in this cube or faces, I can go up to display, head up display, poly count. And inside here, we can see that we've got six faces um, of this cube. Now, the extrude tool is used uh, to create additional faces. So it's important that you select the faces that you want to extrude. So to do that, right click on the selected uh, geometry and select face by holding down the mouse and dragging to the bottom. And we get the face and now we can see we can highlight different faces. So I'll highlight the top face like so. And the extrude tool is under Edit Mesh, make sure that you're in the Modeling Toolkit and Edit Mesh, Extrude or Control E, as you can see there, are, are its options. So when you activate the tool, notice that my face count has gone up. Okay, so it's no longer six, we're, we're at 10. Now we can't see any difference here because the new faces are exactly on top of each other. So make sure every time you press extrude that you move the faces out or you're going to get a lot of geometry sitting exactly underneath and you'll get problems later on. So the first step will be to move the geometry away. To do that, we can use this little um, uh, multi-tool and we've got the ability to click on an axis and then drag it up or click on the other axes and, and move those around as well. If we click on the middle, it will free transform it around, but that can be problematic. So there's our move tools. We've also got the ability to click on the boxes, the cubes, and then we can scale it in different directions. So we could scale it like so, or like so, or if in, we do in the middle, we do all of them at the same time. So the extrude tool is used um, to block out our geometry. So we've done one extrude already. Now, the other option for activating the extrude, to extrude is uh, here, where we've got the little icon. So if I click on that again, again, you can see the face count's gone up. This time we can sort of extrude inwards across the plane. And the other option is if we press G on the keyboard, it reactivates the uh, last tool that we use. So if I press G again, again, the faces go up um, and I've got extra geometry in there as well. So the nice thing about this tool is you can quickly block in some of your um, geometry on how you want it to be and really sort of start to um, create a simple structures that you, then you can add detail to as you go along. All right, so let's just get rid of that for now. Just a couple of the other options that we have. So if we have a sort of a sphere or a geometry with lots of faces and we don't have anything selected um, and we press extrude, all those faces will be um, uh, extruded out. Now, the other thing is we've got this option called keep faces on or keep faces together and it's turned on. This means when we extrude out, the faces are joined. But if we turn that off and we extrude out, then each of those faces are separate like so. So I'll just get rid of, get rid of that. Um, another way to work would be to select individual faces either side and when we press extrude the faces are going to move notice they're moving out in accordance to the local axes of the face so from the normal if we press this uh, little icon up the top here we go into world space so they're both moving in the same direction now. So we'll go back there, move that out. And let's say, oh, there we go. We're going 
in opposite directions. That's okay. So if we want to quickly block out a, say, banana, we can then use this sort of technique to uh, do that. So I'll just grab an extrude and I'll extrude out, move it up a bit and scale it in. And G, create another extrusion like so. And do that on the other side as well. And there we go. So the good thing about um, box modeling is it keeps things simple and then you can manipulate things and, and fix them up. So I'll just go into uh, edge mode now. And if I double click on an edge, I'll select the whole ring around. And then I can move that edge around to, you know, make it more appropriate. Can even rotate them around like so. Okay, so the next tool that we're going to look at is how to add additional detail once we've extruded it out. So the box modeling technique allows us to retain quads over our object, which is fantastic because the next tool will insert edge loops over quads only. So to do that, Again, we'll go into Mesh Tools this time and go Insert Edge Loop. With this tool, we can click on an edge and it'll create a loop going around it so you've got the ability to add additional detail. So I'll press G again to reactivate the tool. Oops, no I won't because I've dropped it. Uh, we'll reactivate the tool normally. insert edge loop and this time uh, I'll go crossways let's say like so so quickly you can with these two tools you can quickly block out uh, geometry and you can still retain quads so that um, it's easy to add additional geometry down the track or subtract it and utilizing these these tools here like so So I'll just grab those vertices and move them down like so. So I might just go into the quad view and have a look at that and fix it up if I need be just with the vertices. So yeah, blocking in the objects and then adding additional detail, refining that detail so that it uh, matches what you're looking for is the basic technique of box modeling. So there we go, there's our banana. Let's now look at some of the more advanced options. So some of the advanced options for extrusion would be if we go into face, select the face, and go up into extrude and go into the uh, extrude face options. Down the bottom here we've got curve settings. So we can actually generate a curve when we uh, create the extrusion. So I'll go extrude now. And if I press wireframe 4 on the keyboard, I can see that curve inside of it. It's a bit hard to see. Let's get it up. Oh, I'll just turn off the grid. So with this curve, I can select the curve um, and go into control vertices of the curve and manipulate those around. So I could move it around, twist it up like that. Again, control vertices. Move those around. Which 
doesn't look that impressive at the moment. However, if we go back into the object, go into the history of the object and go to extrude, we've got the ability to add extra divisions. So I'll select the text, middle mouse button, scroll, and then I've added additional divisions. And we can also twist, twist that around like so. And even if we wanted to, we could taper it in like so. So that curve gives us um, a fair bit of control over what we can do. So I'll go back and just edit reset settings and close and delete that those two. This time we'll do the same sort of thing but we'll use the shortcut control E and in here we can do similar sort of things. So we can translate by clicking and dragging just with the right mouse button onto the text and we can add divisions as well straight away inside of there. Um, offset um, is like scaling and thickness is like um, distance. That concludes looking at some of the tools used for box modeling, the extrude tool as well as the insert edge loop tool.